as we all know, Dylan White is never short of a word or two. He's never afraid to express himself. And in this instance, he's going in on Tyson Fury yet again. So, he said, Fury knew that this fight was dying on its butt and pulled out. They couldn't give a ticket away as Brits were not traveling and none of the TV companies were bothered about another 5 a.m. fight against the bloke he has already beaten. And he's obviously talking about the Deontay Wilder fight here. Money is everything to Fury. Where is the £7 million he supposedly donated to the homeless charities after the first Wilder fight? Tyson Fury talks a lot of beep, and people sadly lap it up. Tyson Fury has effed the entire heavyweight boxing scene all around the world, and the whole sport is struggling because of it. When the heavyweights are buzzing, the whole sport thrives, and when it's rubbish, the whole sport suffers. Losing the AJ versus Fury fight has effed boxing because casual fans just see big fights not happening and people at the top lying to them or fighting bums instead. Fury is a nasty piece of work and his biggest skill is conning the public because they always end up feeling sorry for him. Boxing is a joke right now. Every other sport is getting attention and it's because he has now effed two or three of the biggest fights around. He goes on to say, if Fury fights in October, then he will have been out the ring not defending the WBC heavyweight title for 20 months, almost two years. That is criminal. He messed me around when ordered by the WBC to fight me for the diamond belt he asked for. He messed Joshua around on the undisputed fight, and now he has messed Wilder around on their rematch. The WBC is a prestigious belt and I don't understand how they can tolerate this guy taking the you know what with their biggest belt. It will have only been fought for five times in the last four years against three different opponents. Enough is enough. Fury should be made champion in recess. Elevate me from interim champion to champion and I will fight Wilder straight away. If and when Fury is ever ready to fight, he can fight the winner, which will be me. And then the winner of that, the rightful WBC champion, can fight AJ for all the belts. In three simple fights, you would know the real number one undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. All this nonsense has to stop. Okay, those are the strong words of Dylan White. Now, I do have to say that a few years ago, Dylan White jumped on this train of claiming Anthony Joshua was the one who didn't want certain fights to happen. Remember when Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder were trying to freeze AJ out of the heavyweight picture? Dylan White kind of tried to get in on the act as well and looked like he wanted to freeze AJ out. But now he's turned around and he's saying that Tyson Fury is the one who's, you know, stopping fights from happening and ducking and diving and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I do have to mention that. Also, when he talks about the stuff that Tyson Fury has done in terms of not donating the money to the homeless and all this kind of stuff, I think that's a valid criticism because Tyson Fury does a lot of posturing and makes a lot of bold claims and says a lot of things but doesn't offer any evidence that he's actually followed it up this is something Tyson Fury has done throughout his career now of course his diehards are going to say well he doesn't want to show that he's giving money to homeless we should all just assume that he's done it and the reason he doesn't want to show it is because he's not fake he's not pretentious he gives money to people off camera behind the scenes not to try and get a pat on the back or a round of applause. Okay, that sounds hot, but then anybody could say that, couldn't they? Any fighter could come out and say, yeah, I've, in, I've donated my entire purse to charity. Well, where's the evidence? Oh, I don't do it on camera. <laughs> and if he didn't want publicity, if he didn't want a pat on the back for it, then why say it in the first place? Why not just do it silently? Why announce it to the public that you're going to donate 
or your purse to charity. So that's a valid criticism that Dylan White makes there. What else does he say here? Yeah, in terms of the inactivity for Tyson Fury, we've had many fighters over the years, and this is not you know, making excuses for it at all, but we've had many fighters over the years who have spent a lot of time out the ring and the WBC has allowed them to keep their belt. I remember Vitaly Klitschko was out of the ring for a very long time at several points in his career. I think after the Manuel Char fight was, well, that was his last fight, wasn't it, Vitaly Klitschko, Manuel Char? Or was it, it wasn't Chisora, was it? I swear it was Char. But either way, he was out of the ring a long time before the WBC made him champion in recess or champion emeritus, whatever their uh, particular term is. And there was a guy at Cruiserweight as well. I want to say he was an Eastern European guy a few years ago. It was around the time when Tony Bellew fought uh, Ilunga Makabu. And again there, the guy was out of the ring for years. <laughs> and the WBC just, you know, let the guy do his thing for a long time before making him champion emeritus. So I wouldn't hold my breath if I was Dylan White with regards to the WBC because they do give their champions a lot of leeway when it comes to inactivity in many instances. And when you've got a guy like Tyson Fury, who's so high profile, who makes a lot of money and therefore pays a lot of sanctioning fees, sometimes they're willing to wait. And with Dylan White, you know, you've got to respect his warrior heart, his tenacity, his determination. But sometimes his rawness can work against him because the way he talks to the WBC, Mauricio Solomon, and so on, sometimes could be counterproductive. Yes, up to a certain point, it's going to help him. The fact that he's not willing to take no for, you know, he's unwilling to take no for an answer. But you can also step over the line where you apply so much pressure and you become so belligerent with a sanctioned body that they actually want to do the opposite and not help you and go out of their way to make you wait even longer. You understand what I'm saying? So there could be a bit of that going on as well with this Dylan White situation. Now, we then come to the final thing that Dylan White said, and this is where a lot of people are going to say, oh, here we go. <laughs> and that is the fact that Dylan White then asks the WBC to make him the full champion and Tyson Fury champion in recess. So some people are going to say, well, this is what it's all about with, with uh, Dylan in this situation. He doesn't really care about the belt being on the line for all this time in terms of it not being good for the sport. All he cares about is trying to get them to elevate him to full champion just so he can have been world champion. So I'm sure people are going to be making that criticism saying, oh, all this was just a setup for Dylan White to say, hey, give me the belt, elevate me to full champion. And I guess that's, you know, people are entitled to their opinion. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. You let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But one thing I think most of us can agree on is that Dylan White is a character and characters are good for the sport. If you got guys who are very good fighters, but they don't talk much, they don't call out their opponents, they're not confrontational with their rivals, it doesn't draw as much attention. Whether people like that or not, it just doesn't. If you want the sport to thrive, you want to bring all the extra fans in, you want to inspire new generations of fighters, you need characters. The fighter who drew me to boxing was Muhammad Ali. When I was given a VHS videotape, a documentary of Ali as a kid, it wasn't just the boxing that I was mesmerized by. It was Ali the character. He was like, you know, larger than life. There was a song that Muhammad Ali, I don't, did he sing it? I'm sure he played some part in singing it, even if he wasn't the main person. But in the song, Ali is called the Black Superman. 
And that's how it was to me as a kid. He was like the black Superman. He was larger than life. So characters, never underestimate how powerful characters can be in boxing. In terms of attracting new fans. Inspiring people like myself to take up the sport. As soon as I saw Muhammad Ali, I was like, I want to be a boxer. <laughs> now, I was always a rough and tumble little kid. But I'd never thought about boxing before I saw Muhammad Ali. You know, you see television shows and movies and whatever where there's boxers in there. And I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. And cartoons as well. But it's not until I saw Ali that I really thought, okay, this is something I want to do. Because of his, his character. Now, Dylan White is no Muhammad Ali, but he's still an interesting, volatile, and engaging character. So, we need guys like Dylan White, 100%. And he's a warrior. Let that be said and known about Dylan White. The man is an absolute warrior. And he comes from, I'm going to call it a tradition of Jamaican fighters who are extremely brave. The vast majority of them, in uh, my experience and my observation over the decades, have been like this. And I'm talking about Jamaican fighters born and raised, right? Dylan White, I believe he came to the UK at around the age of 14. So the guys who were born and raised over there, they have a, I don't know, there's something about them where they're just extremely brave. Razor Ruddock was like that. I think Razor Ruddock, due to the Tyson fights, was slightly overrated, but he was an extremely brave man. <laughs> Razor Ruddock, extremely brave. Trevor Burbick, another Jamaican that Mike Tyson fought, he was too brave for his own good. <laughs> he came out and tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson. He didn't have the defense to be able to do something like that, but he tried it anyway. So, yeah, I could go on, but Jamaican fighters typically are very, very brave. And Dylan White definitely comes from that tradition. Brave, brave man. So, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. About Dylan White saying that Tyson Fury is conning the public. And that is his biggest skill. Let me know.